Hello, everybody. My name is Raccoon Bro, and it is time for another. The fuck do I normally say? <laughs> I forget what I say. Hello, everybody. My name is Raccoon Bro, and welcome back to another reaction. Oh my yes. It's okay. Hello, everybody. My name is Raccoon Bro, and welcome back to another reaction video. It is time for another death battle, and it's against two of comics' greatest billionaire superheroes. Batman, also known as Bruce Wayne, versus Iron Man, also known as Tony Stark. I did not think I would be hyped for this episode at all. I mean, you know, it's not only Marvel versus DC, but it's also the fourth time they've used Batman. I mean, if Batman versus Captain America or Batman versus Black Panther didn't exist, then I would 100% be uh, a lot more excited for this initially. But, I mean, you know, as it is, it's just, um, it feels overexposed, but... After that preview we got, and after all the news about all the different things they'd be given, I I was a lot more in interested in this one. And I was, who knows, maybe we'll get something pretty spectacular, something on par with Iron Man's last episode, I, which would be a tall order for sure. So, without further delay, let's get into the mayhem. By the way, Rooster Teeth's website has a new thing where it might go green after a while, so I really hope that doesn't happen here. Batman, DC's vengeful crusader of the night. Iron Man, Marvel's genius billionaire playboy philanthropist. These two mortal men have used their intellect and determination to take their place alongside gods. And being filthy stinking rich sure doesn't hmm. hurt either. He's whiz and I'm boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons. Yeah, this always skills. This always felt like the more fitting uh, matchup battle. for Batman of all of his fights. It's just that, you know, he, Iron, Iron Man's always been bad. such a weird opponent for him. Because, I mean, you know, Batman just has a normal bat suit. But thanks to the Hellbat suit, the things are going to be a bit Batman. more interesting. But before he dressed like a giant rodent and employed little boys in booty shorts as meat shields, he was Bruce Wayne. Scion of the multi-billion dollar company, Wayne Enterprises. Until mommy and daddy got 360 no scope, leaving Bruce with a void inside him that could only be filled by the never-ending quest for justice and vengeance. Wants Batman, to know why you said Bruce that name. Wayne died and the Batman was born. He would devote his uh, life I will never to his body We will never forget that scene, Zack. He would Zack Snyder. his own mortality into legend. A nightmare to haunt evildoers till the end of time. Jesus Christ! I feel like Zoloft and therapy would work too, but okay, whatever works. Hmm. Batman's resume is absurd. He's mastered 127 martial arts, trained in stealth and assassination, and is a super genius with a photographic memory. Oh my He's god, that comic book editing character. is so cool. <laughs> like how the League of Shadows needs to keep erasing Batman's memories because he keeps finding their secret bases. Or the time he found a dead body with no entry or exit wound and a 40-year-old bullet nearby. And this editing. Determined this is exactly why I'm excited by comic book episodes time. again. Despite being a master marksman, escape artist, forensic scientist, mechanical engineer, and ninja. One of Love that movie. That's that such all. a cool one. Is fat sticks. Vance has poured his billions into tactical armor and gadgets for every conceivable situation. If there's one word to describe Batman... It's prepared. Made of reinforced oh. Kevlar and titanium. His I was wondering if they would give him final bat suit. Fire and even protected him from this massive explosion. Judging by the size of the detonation, Batman's distance from the epicenter, and the surface area of his body, he must have withstood a blast of nearly 60 tons of TNT. His cowl comes with night vision, infrared, and a radio, while his utility belt is chock full of smoke bombs, nerf toxins, a grappling hook, and batarangs, which he can control midair and set to explode. Ah, oh, that it looks was so these cool. Tools that allowed Batman to wage his one man war on crime. But once he got over his angsty loner phase, he helped found the Justice League of America in order to bring his personal brand of Bat Justice to the entire world. And Batman's knack for schemes and preparations skyrocketed the match, turning him into the Bat God we all know and mean. Like the time Did someone say prep time? Backup personality that would ensure he functions as Batman in case of a psychological attack that drove him mad. A backup human operating system. Like a computer, but it's his brain. 
Whoa. He has plans tailored to his teammates. That's nuts. Is, should they ever go rogue, he's developed contingencies for everything, which is why Bats comes prepared with extra suits for any occasion. Like his Nightfall exosuit to battle Bane, or the Justice Buster, which he obviously designed to combat the Justice League. He even got a final bat suit from his sixth dimensional self that can rewrite your mind. <laughs> but my favorite is his stylish zebra suit, which he wore after getting weird magneto powers. They just made his suit look like this for some reason. <laughs> There's also the rainbow Batman suit, the suit of sorrows, and of course, the bat nipples. Chicks dig the bat nipples. All paid for with the bat credit card. Never leave the cave without it. <laughs> but perhaps his greatest suit of armor, the one designed to put him on the same level of insane mind-bending power as his league teammates, is the Hell Bat. AKA the single coolest looking thing ever invented. Forged by Superman in the heart of the sun, each member of the Justice League contributed to this monstrous mech's abilities. And boy does it show, the Hellbat is absolutely hardcore. Made of nanokinetic mech. So is the Hellbat his strongest suit? Uh, I wasn't sure if it was that or the final bat suit. Oh, uh, we'll find out. It can shapeshift around Batman's body and operates via telepathic link. It can fly, turn invisible, and fire a bat-shaped chest laser. And by diverting all the suit's power into his fists, he can use the Devastator, a punch powered by Wonder Woman's strength. And she's strong enough to yank the freaking Earth around. Hmm. Though it does have a 95% chance of giving old Bats a heart attack. Oh. He has given himself to save all of Gotham City on at least one occasion. It's that level of insane drive that pushed him to use the Hellbat in his one-man invasion of Apocalypse in order to bring his son back to life. Aww. You know, Apocalypse, home to the god of evil himself, Darkseid. Batman stared down the final boss of DC Comics and actually kicked his ass. This is incredible, considering Darkseid is a being strong enough to destroy entire universes and fast enough to fly to the edge of the universe in seconds. Since the DC universe is significantly larger than our own, that would be over 600 quintillion times the speed of light. That same Darkseid avatar even took a Shoryuken from Alan Scott, who was amped up from the energy of the multiverse. Mm. And Bats cleaned his clock just as hard. But this incalculable strength is drawn from Batman's own life force, specifically his metabolism. Should any fight with the Hellbat go on too long, Batman may succumb to its hunger before finishing the fight himself. Oh my or gosh. Or absorb someone else's biomass for fuel. That works too. Oh so gosh. You'd have to be completely batshit insane to pilot this thing. And bats, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, sorry to break it to you, but the grown man that wears his underwear on the outside isn't all there. Probably. Keeping with being a perfectionist though, he's completely aware of this. That's why he does not kill. Because if he did, he understands that he can't trust himself to know when to stop. Batman has outsmarted the nigh omniscient Metron, defeated his dark counterpart, the Batman who laughs, and humiliated Superman in a one on one fight. No, wait, that one's not canon. <laughs> that one he technically had help. Yeah, that one. Although many yeah. of his greatest accomplishments have been aided by his exceptional prep work and foreknowledge, he's no stranger to being put on the spot, even in the face of Armageddon. Who else would kick the Spectre, the Angel of Wrath, God's divine judgment, in the face, and then tell him to get the hell out of his city? I'll tell you who, the goddamn motherfucking na 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 na, -na Batman! My parademons arrive soon. Think I haven't planned for this? That's a pretty good end clip considering this is Batman, but with prep time. You would be forgiven for doubting the destiny of genius, billionaire, playboy, philanthropist, philanthropist. Tony Stark. Yeah, cause you can add massive prick to that list too. Tony's parents died when he was still young, leaving the mind-bogglingly brilliant prodigy to inherit a multi-billion dollar tech company. With mommy and daddy's purse strings, Tony decided to live it up and down in booze and the ladies. Which was problematic considering he made his fortune as a part of a military industrial complex, selling devastating high-tech arms to the highest bidder. And Tony got to see his handiwork firsthand when it literally blew up in his face. Tony never had much of a heart to begin with, but after that, he literally had even less. Unlike so many men of weaker spirit though, Tony refused to give up. He was made of tougher stuff. He was made of iron.
So he built himself a robot suit to bust the hell out of there. And when he got back yeah, to the good when it comes to that iron, I'm especially looking forward to the, the Iron Man uh, by Black Sabbath references in the songs mu in, in this episode's song. Building new suits of armor wasn't just a hobby for Tony, but an obsession. Over the course of his long career... Because from what I heard in the preview, it sounded like something that ACDC would have done. ...called to him at once like a literal one-man army. Most of his armors come with the same basic toolkit. Super strength, massively hypersonic flight, and repulsor blast. Repulsors are extremely dense beams of muons, unstable subatomic particles similar to electrons. They're actually really interesting. See, they're classified as leptons, which don't have any known substructures. Just sort of like... It's a laser! Just suck the fun out of it. His armors also come with onboard AI, like Friday, which can hack into enemy technology, command his other... A backup AI of enemy, himself? Operate down to the Jeez. Pit. That's one trillionth of a second. To both Tony and Bruce do not trust their own sanity at all. By taking a look at its speed, Tony's armor would have had to be hidden with an energy of nearly 300 teratons of TNT. That's three times stronger than the asteroid that wiped out the dinosaurs. Years spent defending the Earth has conditioned Tony to be prepared for any threat imaginable, and he has an armor for almost any occasion. He's got an armor to bust pulps, an armor to bust Thors, an armor that can turn intangible, a super tiny armor God that can with your insides, and an armor made of white sticky alien goo. Definitely not legal in all 50 states. Gross. In order to remain as flexible as possible, though, his standard go-to is the Model Prime. It has all the classic Iron Man staples and has even incorporated size changing for extra strength, an invisible stealth mode, and, and a badass lightning samurai sword! Say what you want about the smug son of a bitch, but he's definitely got style. Cool. It's alcoholism, but look who's talking! It was more than likely that same Devil May Care attitude that led to Tony revealing his secret identity to the world. Which, I guess, had no consequences. <laughs> Look, Wiz, when you build a space laser strong enough to wipe out alien fleets in one shot, I don't think the Mandarin is going to interrupt your swarm of lunch date. That space laser is a Dyson Sphere, a speculative superstructure that is meant to encircle an entire star and harness its energy. Something only possible by a theoretical Type 2 civilization on the Kardashev scale. It's basically when your galaxy brained enough to draw power from the entire solar system. I know it's comics, but the fact that Tony just has one of these lying around is insane. Known as Soul's Hammer, Tony's incomplete sphere is strong enough to destroy a planet at only a 2% charge. Didn't you work on one of those? I remember you talking about how it would solve your student loan problems once and for all. On behalf of the families of several planets that no longer exist, I'm not legally at liberty to discuss that. Hmm. Years of protecting the world from aliens, gods, so, and even his Wiz, friends. So, Wiz, that stuff Wiz has uh, been a student down. at and other planets, I suppose. Himself, he would never become a narc. Siding with U.S. government's enforcement of the Superhuman Registration Act led to a literal civil war between superheroes. It wouldn't be his last. Though it hmm. did prove he could hang with the best of them. He's beaten Captain America in hand-to-hand -hand combat, survived blows from Thor, and even took down the Worldbreaker Hulk. He even matched Magneto. Magneto, the guy that controls metal, the thing that surrounds Tony's entire body, by amplifying his power with Jupiter's magnetic field. And then Max punched him with the power of the sun, and it was like, no big deal. There really doesn't seem to be a limit to how insane Tony's tech gets. In the movies, this is the same guy that figured out time travel just sitting around one evening. In the time it takes me to hmm. down a beer, Tony's already shattered the laws of physics. Oh, wait, I didn't. It... History of time traveling. Oh, takes cool. Me to down a beer, Tony's already shattered the laws of physics. Yeah, sure. Go to the Middle Ages and play nights with Dr. Doom. Scamp. <laughs> Perhaps his greatest invention of all, however, was the Escape, an entire virtual universe where the only limit is his imagination. Now this looks awesome. Tony's nothing if not predictable. He made an armor out of it. That's right. He made an armor out of a universe. This virtual armor is composed of solid holograms that can form any weapon Tony can think of. But even it likely cannot compare to the armor Tony created inside the Escape. The what? It's literally Iron Man going Super Saiyan. 
The Godbuster was so powerful, it destroyed the entire Escape in a single blast, along with the AI controlling all of it. An earlier iteration of the Godbuster was able to stand up to Celestials, cosmic gods that can warp reality, like Galactus, Odin, and Franklin, who can threaten the multiverse with their power. So it lives up to the friggin' name in case you were wondering. But it isn't that kind of power that makes Tony special. After a life spent wallowing in vice and pleasure, Tony rebuilt himself into a man he could be proud of. Someone who could sacrifice everything to save the world. I suppose underneath it all, that man of iron had a heart of gold. You want my property? You can't have it. But I did you a big favor. I have successfully privatized world peace. <laughs> All right, the combatants are set. We've run the data through all possibilities. It's time for a... All right, this is pretty tough, but I think I'm going to go with Iron Man. It just, it seems like not only is this stuff like a lot more powerful, it seems that with the, his suits coming to him constantly, he has a lot more versatility, and he doesn't really have to worry about it sucking the life out of him like Hellbat does. So I'm going to go with Tony for this one. Death battle! That being said, I will not be disappointed at all if I get it wrong, because I like both of these characters a lot. And I'm very glad they both have voice actors. Finally, they gave Batman a fucking voice actor. God! And, I mean, when he is in the episode, uh, I'm not talking about in Batman Beyond or the uh, Red Hood ones, okay? With a healthy sense of paranoia and billions to spare, but Steve and Nat are really up my ass about this. Take the watchtower offline now. Bruce. Bruce. You don't want this fight, Tony. It'll be the biggest mistake of your life. Clark, do you read me? The watchtower is I freaking attacked. love how he tries to call for backup at first, but they take out that possibility. Uh oh, cool. And I love how the laser looks too, it's so fluid. All right, time for new stuff. Really, Bruce? Fish I thought we were grown-ups here. Here he comes. Ready when you are. Oh. Friday, I need Soul's hammer online pronto. Match my coordinates. I'll try to. Oh. <laughs> Crap! Whoa! Oh, now that is an awesome callback. What do you expect? I am Batman. <laughs> that. And I am Iron Man. Yeah! I've got a suit for everything, Bats, including busting wannabe gods like you. Ooh. Oh, this music is so good! Bust this. <laughs> Holy crap! Holy shit, that's so awesome! Oh my god. Had to divert some power to hacking that suit. Like I said, second grade. Hmm. Friday, fire the hammer! Oh man. Uh oh. Tony, just you and me, man to man. Well, man to genius billionaire playboy. <laughs> oh, he doesn't stand a chance against Batman in a fist fight. Maybe just one more. Model 58, the nano armor. Snuck it into your body back on the watchtower. Friday, initiate self destruct. Whoa. Friday, I could really use a drink.
Okay, that was a pretty poggers episode. <laughs> and I got it right. Awesome. KO! Oh, come on! You know if they fought naked, Batman would have beat the shit out of him. While Batman hmm. is a character defined by his tenacity, preparedness, and utter genius, so is Tony Stark. Yeah. So neither could rely on that skill set alone to pull them through. And it shouldn't come as a surprise. Batman's standard Batsuit couldn't quite hold up to the firepower of even the most basic Iron Man armors. The Batsuit is surprisingly tough, sure, but it isn't taking hits from a dude that can punch apart Manhattan. <laughs> and despite Bats having a ton of nifty gadgets, Iron Man's armors were way more varied and powerful. With so many unique and often alien abilities, there was no way Bats could predict all of them. With time, he could certainly figure out a plan of attack, but since Tony is just as much a genius schemer as Batman, he could do the same. There are lots of cases where he would have won, especially with his ace of the hole, the Hellbat. The Justice Buster was specifically designed to face the Justice League. Many of its armaments would be ineffective against most Iron Man armors. Likewise, it cannot counter the abilities. Yeah. The Hellbat's raw power and speed absolutely dwarfed the majority of Iron Man's arsenal and could have killed him immediately were it not for Tony's own trump cards. Like the Godbuster, which was definitely strong enough hmm. to contend with it. The Hellbat could take on Darkseid, but a weaker version of the Godbuster could hold its own against Celestials. Darkseid was a being capable of threatening the multiverse with his power and moving many times faster than light, but the Celestials were capable of the same. With an armor that strong, Tony could buy himself enough time to break out all his other tricks, like sneaking nano armors into Batman's body, phasing through him with ghost tech, draining the Hellbat's power, or just hacking his suit and shutting it off. And with an army of armors at his beck and call, Tony could certainly hold Batman off long enough to employ those strategies. Hell, since he can control them remotely, he technically didn't even need to be there and put himself in harm's way. And remember, the Hellbat used Batman's own life force as a battery. He needed to end the fight quick or else his own armor would kill him first. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Could be used to control Tony Stark's mind, but between dealing with Mephisto and his AI backups, it was not enough to be a deciding factor. First, with Tony throwing an army at him, he didn't have a good way of doing that. Tony just had way too much shit to throw at Batman, while Batman didn't have the time or options he needed to keep up. Batman may have been a god among men, but Iron Man's wealth of gadgets, insanely powerful tech, and greater mechanical experience allowed him to crush the Cape Crusader. You might think it's an injustice that Batman's gonna need avenging, but Iron Man was in a whole nother league. Hmm. The winner is Iron Man. Uh, Tony's two for two, hey, baby! Hope you enjoyed that episode. If Holy shit, that was Giotti! Awesome! Oh my god, Giotti really cannot fucking win any of these goddamn fights! <laughs> I had no idea that was Giotti! And he, he still can't win! Even when he's playing a DC character, he can never fucking win any of these! I feel so bad for him! Oh my god! God! Uh... Oh, I'm a little disappointed also that Chuck Huber didn't come back, but Reagan did a good job. Props to you. Props to you, buddy. We just released a brand new show called Last Laugh on Rooster Teeth. All right. It's all about people trying to make each other Next laugh. Next time. Everybody trying not to. Check it out by clicking the box below me. Thanks. Oh, shit. Okay. Okay, we're gonna... We're done with the comic fights for a while after this one. I know we are because of that death battle preview we got. But uh, I was wondering if we were going to get a Dragon Ball fight this year. Uh, Eric, here it is. So, uh, wow. Okay, that was a really awesome. A lot better than I was expecting it to be at all. I mean, just uh, there was so much variety with all the suits. And the characterization was on point, too. Uh, very fun performances. Uh, there were a lot of... Awesome moments like all the bat symbols going through the buildings and freaking him taking the watchtower and slamming it him into the earth. Just like, ah, oh God, that, that, that was a real. I, uh, I'm, I'm honestly gonna have to let this one sit for a while, whether it's like a nine or a 10, because it's really, it's really that great. And I'm, I'm not sure if it's better than Iron Man versus Lex Luthor still, but, uh, I, I also had a really fun time with the analysis as well, with the editing and, uh, uh, there, I, there weren't any parts that made me cringe at the very least. So there's that. Uh, yeah, but ba Batman versus Iron Man, you were a lot better than I uh, thought you were going to be. So I am very thankful for that. And 
As for Goku Black versus Reverse Flash, uh, will we finally, will we finally get a, an episode where the DC character loses and it isn't Marvel? <laughs> we'll just have to see. So, thank you all so much for joining me. I hope you all liked the video as much as I did, and be sure to stay tuned for the next video. Take care.